In fact, in Exodus 20, 20, when God comes in the presence of the Israelites in a cloud and lightning over Mount Sinai, the Israelites freak out. And they don't want to go towards it. And Moses tells them specifically, do not fear. God has come to prove you. Same word. Prove you. Don't fear it. Don't fear this. So Abraham shouldn't be fearing God. God's not saying it's do or die. This is make or break. You got you to obey me or, or we're out. Like the, I'm trying to figure out if you're going to stand, Abraham. He doesn't say that to Abraham. That's not what he's doing. That's not the picture that God is painting for us here in Scripture. And that's not how he looks at you in your life of faith. You see, I think the best word for us to look at is refine. God refines our faith. God wants to mold it, shape it, strengthen it. Let's, let's take a metaphor here. In exercise, if you read about exercise and you talk to people about exercise, are you going to get in shape? <laughs> it's the same thing with your faith. If you, I mean, it, it's going to give you good fundamentals, right? Like, if you know how to exercise, good, right? If you understand kind of some of the concepts, it's going to equip you and probably being around people who exercise a lot, well, probably via guilt or whatever, like you'll probably start exercising a lot more. It's kind of similar, right? Because our faith needs to be exercised. But here's the thing. How do you do it? How do you strengthen your faith, right? We, we started this whole series with going, are you a man or a woman of faith? And you go, eh, I don't really like that. Yeah, I mean, I want to be. Okay. So what do you do? Read more, pray more, hang out with Christians. How, how, how do we actually do this? You see, because there's a fundamental piece there where it's like you actually have to take a step in faith. You have to do that. And this is, this is the beautiful thing is that God does the refining. He not only put the faith in you, he's going to refine the faith that's in you, right? Like he does all of this. This isn't something you have to do. He's going to give you opportunities. He's going to give you opportunities to step out in faith. And, and you might do it. You might not. In Joshua chapter 6, there's the story, and it's a very familiar story of, of the Israelites marching around Jericho, right? And on the seventh day, all the army is supposed to shout. You think everybody shouted? You think there was somebody marching? I was like, I mean, come on. There's no way this is going to happen. I think there was. I think there might have been. And when everybody shouted, what happened? The walls come tumbling down and everybody goes in, right? And all this. What about the person that didn't shout? They still went in. They still saw God's work. What's different? You see, they didn't get their faith strengthened. They didn't get to say, well, no, I actually believe that that was going to happen. And I shouted too. And, and then I get to go in. Like, this is why scripture talks about those who have come to faith and lived a life of faith here. This is why we're going to enjoy heaven more kind of to some extent than, than those who kind of just barely make it through passing through the flames. Because you've lived a life and when you finally see and when you see Christ come back, we're like, yes, we've been waiting for this. But there's going to be some people that are like, have been scoffing their entire life and they go, well, okay, <laughs> apparently this is real. There's a difference. There's a difference in those faces. There's, there's a difference inside of us, not something that we can quantify, not something that we can do. In fact, God presents us with the opportunities. And the question is, are we going to step out and go, I want to experience that. I want my faith to be refined. So do you? Do you want your faith to be refined? Do you want to be a man or a woman of God? Yeah, but, but Jonathan, I know, I know what's going to come next. And it makes me nervous. 